Alice, what are you doing? Trying to light a potato with a light bulb. Isn't it the other way around? Lighting a light bulb with a potato? That's why it's not working. Huh. Yeah, so why are you trying to do this? Because, Alice, potatoes are awesome! And because they seem like a more efficient energy source, and because they're eco friendly er than batteries. I guess so. This sounds pretty cool. What can we do to help? Well, for starters, you need a sack of potatoes. Obviously. And a light bulb. Again, obviously. Well, miss, everything's obvious to me because my name's Alice. What so, is? hold on. What are we really trying to find out? When I was a little boy, and I was on the playground, I used to hear myths that if you got a potato, kind of a, and a penny. You know, pennies were made of copper, down the periodic table. And a nail, preferably made out of zinc. another element, by the way, please. Then you could light a light bulb. So that's what I wanted to find out. But I also want to find out, can six potatoes light a 12-volt light bulb? Yeah. Interesting. So let's get started. Our myth of lighting a potato with a light bulb comes from the classic science fair. You always have your baking soda volcanoes, your Mentos in a soda, and your potato light bulbs. But does the potato really work? Or is it all just talk and no walk? If one potato generates any power, then we think six potatoes can light a 12 volt light bulb. But we want to know if the potato's power would last longer than the battery power, making them more efficient than batteries. Besides the potato, we need a light bulb, but not this light bulb. We need this smaller light bulb. Put in the potato if we need copper wire, along with wire cutters, and then we need a galvanized nail. And to check the voltage of the potato, we need a voltage meter. And along with the voltage meter, we need jumper cables. For the second part, we just need the batteries and the electrical tape to wrap around the batteries. First, we have to peel the potatoes to allow all the ions in the potato to flow more freely. Then, we insert a copper wire into one side to draw out the negative ions, and a galvanized nail into the other side to draw out the positive ions. We wrap one copper wire around the nail, then attach the wires to the voltmeter and record the voltage of each potato. Before we go any further, we have to make sure that we have the right kind of light bulbs. These four regular light bulbs will not work for the experiment. We tried, and due to the way these light bulbs are constructed, you cannot light them with wires and batteries alone. Get LED light bulbs. LED lights do not heat up as fast as regular light bulbs, and consume less energy needed than regular light bulbs. Hook up one potato to the LED light bulb with the least voltage. In our case, the smallest LED gave 2.4 volts. Using jumper cables, attach the positive to positive, negative to negative. If it doesn't work, switch the cables around. Now, we make a chain of potatoes. Wrap the positive copper wire of one potato with the negative copper wire of another. Take note of the voltage as it increases. Our chain gave out 4.6 volts. After, hook up each end of the chain to the light bulb, again using the jumper cable. The light bulb actually does light up but only slightly. We couldn't catch it on camera and it kept dimming out, so we decided to hook the potatoes up to the bigger, better, 12 volt light bulb. It is the moment of truth. Can these six potatoes light this 12 volt light bulb? That's not very big. It's 12 volts, Alice, what do you want?
This isn't very bright. I wonder what it'd be like compared to batteries. Well, I have some. Do you want to try? Time for a new procedure. Tanya already has her batteries packaged the way we need them. And what this is, is the batteries have a positive and negative side. The positive side is the one with the little nose at the end, and then the flat side is the negative. And what she did was she taped one battery's positive side to touch another battery's negative side. And then she had the third battery with the same thing. The batteries are successfully taped together at their positive and negative ends, touch the positive side of the wire, or the jumper cable, to the positive end, and the negative side to the negative end. And it gives a lot stronger light than the potatoes do. So what just happened? I saw the light bulb light up, but how? Let me explain how this works. In a sense, the actual experiment is a single replacement reaction. Isn't that when you have a chemical reaction where a single element replaces another in a compound? So like, element A replaces element B in compound BC? Oh, so this has something to do with the copper and zinc, right? Yes, but in this case, the copper isn't doing much reacting. It's just directing the negative electrons to the light bulb. There's a third ion that I forgot to mention. The potato contains phosphoric acid, which is the compound BC of that example. That makes sense. Yeah, that's right. In order for the light bulb to take energy from the potato, it needs a specific charge from the nail. The zinc nail contains a neutral charge. It needs a positive two charge to power the light bulb. To get that charge, a process called oxidation has to take place. Isn't that when oxygen just interacts with whatever substance it comes into contact with? Which is why a potato is starting to brown during the experiment? Exactly. During the oxidation, the zinc loses two electrons. This means the zinc went from having a neutral charge to a positive charge. Also, zinc is an active metal, meaning that it reacts with positively charged hydrogen. Those electrons are given to two hydrogen atoms from the phosphoric acid, now turning them into hydrogen gas. So overall, it would look like this? Yep. So the acid reacts with the zinc's electrons and takes them away. The hydrogen then gains two electrons lost and becomes hydrogen gas. Yep. So we've proven our myth to be true. A potato can light a light bulb. And six potatoes can power a 12 volt light bulb. So can potatoes outlast batteries? Are they more efficient? Well, I don't think we can switch to potato power yet because it took twice as much potatoes as it did batteries to produce the voltage needed to light the light bulb. Yeah, but aren't there things out there like biofuel and biomass? That's true. I've heard of cars running on biofuel left over from french fries. Well, I don't think anyone would want to carry around all those potatoes in their pocket, and potatoes do all have their own individual voltage, plus they also run away even though it does take a while. So potato batteries won't be around for a while? No, probably not, but at least they'll have one for a few days.